We'd like to welcome all of you to the 12th annual Shape of Addison Town Meeting. I am Jack Menching from Itasca Bank and Trust Company, and I will act as the moderator of this forum. We are very pleased to work with all of the taxing bodies that are here for tonight's program. We hope all of you have found the previous town meetings informative and a good vehicle to have your questions answered. Tonight's program is live with the residents at home. We're excited to be able to reach so many more people and to let people and let them participate. Each speaker will have approximately five minutes to talk about their recent accomplishments and the future plans of their organization. After everyone has had an opportunity to speak, we will entertain questions from you. In order to speed up the question and answer period, we ask that you write out your questions and turn them in to the people who will be around to collect them throughout the program. If you just hold them up and pass them to the aisles, there will be people to get them from you. For those of you at home, you can email them to shapeofaddison at addisonadvantage.org, or you can phone them in to our operators at 630-693-7975 between now and about 820. Uh, th that's going to get flashed on the TV screen so you can see those, uh, the email address and the phone number. I will read the questions so that everyone can hear them and direct them to the proper party. We'll try to answer all of the questions if time permits. The only thing that we ask is that the questions be non-political and not get personal. Questions of this kind will not be read as they are not appropriate for this forum. Unfortunately, we cannot allow people to speak from the audience because it slows the process down and we will limit the number of questions that can, we can read. We want to get through as many questions as possible. After the program, there will be cookies and coffee for everyone. You can also use that time to talk further with your elected and appointed officials. We're excited this year because Don Weiss, Director of Community Relations for uh, Addison, is teaching a class at NIU University this evening. His students are going to be uh, watching this and they can, are gonna submit some questions to the panel also. They're getting credit for listening and asking the questions. I'm excited about this because I've always felt that this is a great program for students to learn from. Uh, this is government at its best, having everybody here in one room and answering questions from all of you. There have been many exciting events in the village this past year. We should have lots of good questions. Our speakers tonight are going to be Dave Williams, board president, Addison School District Number 4, Mike Super, board president, Addison Fire Protection District Number 1, Michael Capizano, Board President, Addison Park District. Rob, Rob Kepka, Board President, Public Library, and he is here. Uh, Tom Edmire, he's Board Member, DuPage High School District 88. And Rich Veenstra, Mayor, Village of Addison. Many of our speakers have brought people from their organization to handle any questions which may be technical. We ask that they use their microphones to answer. I would also hope that if any of the members uh, of any of the boards or in the audience that the speakers will go ahead and introduce them so we can all see them. Our first speaker tonight is Dave Williams. He's president of Addison School District Number 4. Addison School District Number 4 was established by local residents in April of 1842. That's 1842. The elementary school district serves nearly 4,000 students in nine different schools and has the lowest tax rate of all elementary school districts in DuPage County. The district portion of your property bill tax is 31.5% uh, for the school district. The elective officials consist of a se seven elected board members for the Board of Education. Uh, Dave? First of all, I'd like to thank Itasca Bank and Trust for their sponsorship of the 12th annual Shape of Addison Town Meeting. Uh, I do have one of my fellow board members in the audience tonight. It's Serge Ruflo, the board secretary. This evening, I will highlight a few of the ongoing programs and issues affecting Addison School District 4. 
Our facilities and infrastructure improvements continue. At the end of this summer, all schools will have redesigned secure entrances. Indian Trail will have major improvements, including new locker rooms and a redesigned main office area. In the near future, we will be installing the Blue Point Alert System in all facilities to notify police of emergencies. This sec security enhancement is partially funded through a grant that was developed in collaboration with District 88 and the Addison Police Department. Due to the uh, success of our dual language program that was piloted at Stone and Wesley schools last year, it has been expanded to all our K-5 schools. The district completed the rollout of Chromebooks to all of our students at the beginning of this school year. This was accomplished a year ahead of the original schedule. The District 4 students uh, again will be presenting at the Students Involved in Technology Conference that takes place in Bensonville. Our pilot kindergarten camp that was begun last summer paid for using grant funds went extremely well and will be expanded this next summer. Incoming uh, kindergarten students will be able to develop skills and become familiar with the school environment. The Board of Education developed and adopted five-year goals this past summer. We are well into the four major goals of providing relevant learning opportunities, social emotional supports, operating and operating within fiscal responsible, responsibility and enhancing community engagement. The board passed another balanced budget this year and continues to operate within our means. The district per pupil operating costs are the lowest in, of any elementary district in DuPage County and our administrative costs are the second lowest in DuPage County. I would also like to encourage the community to watch the monthly board meetings on cable. Every month, a different school presents what new and innovative things are occurring in their individual schools. Collaboration with our community partners continues. The intergovernmental cooperation with 88, District 88, the Village, Park District, Fire and Police Departments has led to opportunities for our students and their families. I thank you for the opportunity this evening to highlight what is happening in Addison School District 4. Superintendent Langton and I will address any additional issues you may have during the question and answer segment. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. I forgot to mention, uh, Dave's been on the board for 19 years and been president for 13 years and has lived in Addison for 39 years. So he, he's almost a lifer here in Addison. Our next speaker uh, is Mike Super. He's the Addison, with the Addison Fire Protection District. Uh, he is the board president and has been a resident of, uh, of Addison for 34 years. He's been on the board for 18 years and been president uh, for uh, seven years. The Addison Fire Protection District was founded in 1947 by a referendum of incorporation on February 27th, 1946. The Fire Protection District portion of your tax bill is 9% and the governing body consists of three elected trustees. Mike? Thank you, Jack. Good evening. Thank you for the Village of Addison, the Itasca Bank, for hosting this annual event. I'm Mike Super. I'm president of the Board of Trustees for the Addison Fire Protection District. Here with me tonight are District Trustees, Secretary Charlie Baxa, our Treasurer Bernadette LaRocca, who's at home watching this. Also, I have my Fire Chief Joe Leone, my Deputy Chief Scott Walker, and Deputy Chief Eric Kramer. They're hiding in the back. <laughs> Fiscally, the Edison Fire District remains strong and well managed. The operation, operating budget is right on target and the district still enjoys a debt-free fiscal report. The pension fund is growing well and has seen substantial growth during the positive eco economy. The district once again negotiated very uh, favorable renewal rates of both liability and worker compensation insurance that has resulted in savings in both of these areas. Our current worker compensation insurance rates for firefighters are among one of the lowest in the state. 
This savings is a result of good negotiations and a safe workplace environment. Operationally, the members and, and the fleet are stable. In 2018, the fire district responded to about 4,800 uh, calls for service. Once again, the overwhelming request was medical. In the, the anticipation of a large amount of medical requests, the district has altered their running uh, procedure to include more ambulances without an increase in personnel. This year, we, we anticipate the purchase of another new ambulance. During the environment of raising interest rates occurred in interest from the district, capital, and operational reserves paid for most of the new ambulance. One new service that we now provide is the additional of special weapons and tactics, or SWAT medics. These paramedics provide the medical component of a SWAT team. It is a privilege to partner with the area police departments and provide medical care for their officers. In return, our district is more prepared to deal with mass casualties, incidents that may happen locally. We continue to partner with the area fire departments and districts to provide assistance to one another. The partnership includes fire, medical, specialty response, training. We also partner with the group purchase, which helps to negotiate a better price. In closing, I'd like to thank again the Village of Addison, the Itasca Bank for hosting the event. I would also like to thank all of the agencies represented here tonight for their continued partnership. On behalf of the Edison Fire Protection District, we are proud to be a part of the Edison Advantage. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Michael Capiz Capizano from the Edison Park District. Uh, he is the board president. He's been a resident of Addison for 29 years and on the board for 19, and in his current position as president for two years. The Addison Park District was formed in 1969, which grew out of the prior Village of Addison Recreation Commission. The Park District portion of your tax bill is 5.08%, and the governing board consists of five elected members. Michael? Thank you. Um, we'd like to thank Jack and the Itasca Bank and Trust, as well as the village for hosting uh, the shape of Addison. The uh, Addison Park District board structure consists of uh, five commissioners, all volunteers and elected, uh, board president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and commissioner. Uh, they consist of myself, Tina Towns, Tom Reed, please stand, um, our secretary, Debbie Guyon, um, and Frank Angelo. Uh, the Addison Park District Board and staff have been extremely busy in 2018, and uh, we are already hard at work hitting the ground running for 2019. Some of the uh, highlights for this year is this is our 50th anniversary, of which you'll be seeing multiple celebrations uh, of participation within the community and with uh, focus groups as well as our partners, which include taxing bodies throughout the village, as well as youth and active adult groups throughout the village. This is our 35th year of Links and Tees. Links and Tees is uh, rated in the top 50 practice golf facilities in North America by Golf Digest Magazine. Uh, this is a well-earned, hard thing to get. If you're looking to improve your golf game, come out to Links and Tees. We have, again, uh, we're in the top 50 best practice facilities in North America. Uh, also, this is the 15th year of Club Fitness. Club Fitness uh, takes care of 2,200 patrons a day. The um, uh, club fitness renovations which have occurred include a new ultraviolet uh, water, water uh, filter which provides the highest quality of indoor pool uh, water and atmosphere. Uh, renovations last year included a, a new $400,000 uh, air conditioning and heating uh, exchange unit. 
Uh, we are also uh, very proud of our partnerships within the village of Addison. We have a before and after school uh, uh, care program uh, for 92 children located at four locations, which include Stone School, Army Trail School, uh, Fullerton, and Wesley School. We are proud of our partnership with District 4 in this endeavor, and we thank you very much. Uh, we also have one of the largest senior clubs and active adult groups in DuPage County, approximately 240 active members within the senior, uh, senior club, which also includes uh, SALT, which is seniors and law enforcement together. These are active adults. They are fine members of our community, contributors to our community. Uh, for their annual holiday project, the seniors collected uh, personal care items for blazer hygiene and for humanity, uh, humanity drive at Addison Trail High School. Uh, members of the club delivered over 400 personal hygiene items to the high school on January uh, 16th. We'd like to thank our senior club and the Village Senior Commission members in the community for their generous, uh, generous donations for a good cause. Um, this year, um, the board uh, and last year are focusing, are concentrating on a pool aquatic center. The district has interviewed three aquatic, uh, aquatic firms and are currently reviewing site locations. A survey will be taken and a citizens advisory group will be formed and they will both be an intricate uh, part of the role in our decision making with the park district. Um, this year also includes our inaugural year for our um, multi-use, uh, multi-purpose field, which includes a soccer FIFA regulation field, a football field, and la lacrosse field located at Community Park. We at the Park District, we are proud of our, of our community. We are uh, proud of our members, and we are uh, proud to be a part of the Addison community. And thank you once again, Addison, uh, uh, Itasca Bank and Trust, and Mayor Veenstra. Thank you, Michael. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Rob Kepka from Addison, Addison Public Library. Uh, Rob has been on, has been, is the board president, has been a resident for 41 years. He's been on the board for 19 years and one and a half years as uh, president. In 1962, the village board approved a referendum request to establish a tax supported library. The voters of Addison passed the ref referendum with a vote of 437 to 69, overwhelming. The library portion of your tax bill is 5.5% and the library board consists of seven elected trustees. Rob? Thank you. <clears throat> I wish to thank the Itasca Bank for sponsoring this annual event. And I also wish to thank the village for hosting us again this year. I like to recognize my fellow board members, but I think the weather uh, canceled their their travel. 2018 marked the 10 year anniversary of the grand opening of the library's current building, as well as a fantastic year for exciting firsts. Our building was recognized as one of Illinois' 200 great places which showcases the best of Illinois architecture. Our first class of career online high school graduates received their diplomas just a few months ago. An event called Ven a Connoisseur to Biblioteca was our first open house specifically geared toward the Spanish speaking members of our community. We even had our very first goose watch, an unplanned occurrence that generated a dedicated following among patrons and staff as the mother and her goslings made their nest on a garden roof. This year, we averaged over 700 visitors per day. They attended programs, used our specialized databases, logged onto our computers, and borrowed our materials. 273,935 items were checked out this year, including digital downloads. That's more than 750 items borrowed per day. 
As we move into 2019, the last year of our current strategic vision, we look forward to gaining your input as we work towards our plan for 2020 and beyond. I'd like to take a moment to tell you how the library spends and saves its money. Our current building was constructed as phase one of a planned two-phase project. Phase two will eventually expand the building by 18,000 square feet. Since our building was completed 10 years ago, the board has been transferring reserve funds left in our general operating budget into our capital reserve fund. The capital, reverse, ref, excuse me, the capital reserve fund exists to help us save for necessary building maintenance, emergency repairs, and replacement or upgrades of critical building systems near the end of their useful lifespans, as well as phase two of our building's construction. This practice has allowed us to continue to grow the money along with accumulated interest that had been set aside for the expansion. In order to ensure proper use of this capital reserve fund, we will have a capital asset study done to establish a multi-year plan for anticipated repairs and replacements that will be needed to maintain our current building. This will help us determine how much money we can re be reasonably allocated toward our plan ex planned expansion. From there, we'll we, we will be gathering feedback from the community, identifying, identifying patron needs, and analyzing the way the, our library is used so that when we enter phase two of our building's construction, we'll have a plan that utilizes the new space in the best possible manner. We were fortunate that our original building project was funded largely through the sales of bonds backed by our local sales taxes and did not have to use property tax money to fund construction. That, combined with the financial practices that have allowed us to save money over the years, has allowed us to freeze our levy at the current rate for the last two tax years. 2018 was our second fines-free year. In 2016, we decided to eliminate fines because we are so generously supported through property taxes. You know that our first floor and cafe area can be bustling with activity. We invite you to enjoy the library on the second floor where staff enforce quiet and silent spaces for anyone hoping to work or relax. In 2018, we focused on listening to staff feedback about the successes and challenges we experienced and analyzed library usage patterns. As a result, we have realigned our staff so that we can provide better desk support for our patrons as well as actively reaching out to the community in 2019. As part of, part of our outreach efforts, we will be hiring a business specialist and we look forward to resuming active Department of Justice recognition status in 2019 as well, once a few open positions are filled. We are always proud of the staff dedication to their work, but this year we were especially proud to see Elizabeth Lynch receive the Illinois Library Association's Young Adult Librarian of the Year Award. She was recognized for the partnership she created between the library and the health department to address teen pregnancy, for her work to increase resources for Spanish-speaking teens in our community, and her partnership with local schools to develop more STEM initiatives for students. We've partnered with a number of local agencies and organizations in the last year, leveraging our resources and working together in service to the community. We thank all of you for being exceptional partners in our mission to serve. Finally, as some of you may know, I've decided not to run for re-election and will retire from the library board at the end of this April. I serve these many years because I believe public libraries are necessary to maintain a literate and informed public in order to defend our democracy. It has been my pleasure to serve our community and support our library's mission as a trustee.
Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Um, I think that idea of waiving the penalties and the fines is a fine idea. So just seeing if anybody's awake out there. Uh, okay. Um, housekeeping issue. I, I gave the old email address. Uh, the one on the screen for the people at home is the correct one. Shape of Addison at Addison il.org. Uh, on that, so I apologize for the old, uh, old email address. Shape of Addison at Addison il.org. If anybody at home sent an email uh, to the one that I gave in the beginning, resend it to the new address. Thank you. Um, we need some more questions. So the, the better, the more questions, the better the program. So if you have questions, please, please get them in. The more, the better. Uh, our next speaker is Tom Edmire from DuPage High School District 88. Uh, Tom is a board member. He's been on the board for 10 years. Uh, the DuPage High School District 88 was founded in 1918 by voters approving the creation of a community high school district for the Elmers Villa Park area. The high school district portion of your tax bill is 27%, and the governing board consists of seven elected members. Tom? Thanks, Jack. Uh, on behalf of DuPage High School District 88, I'd like to thank Itasca Bank and the Village of Addison for this opportunity to share the highlights and successes of the district, which is comprised of Addison Trail and Willowbrook High Schools. I'd also like to thank the administrators who are in the audience in attendance tonight. Uh, this past August, we welcomed Tina harrell a 2002 graduate of Addison Trail High School as a new member of the Board of Education. Um, a, little, a few highlights, our students continue to achieve at the highest levels in academics, athletics, and extracurricular activities and receive state and national recognitions. And our emphasis is on giving back and helping others remain a cornerstone of pride at Addison Trail through events such as blood drives, food drives, raising money for cancer research and awareness, participating in park pride cleanup days and shoveling snow for community members. Uh, we continue to align with the Every Student Succeeds Act, uh, commonly known as ESSA, which was implemented, implemented this year for the first time. It uh, was passed as a new education law that reauthorizes the Elementary and Secondary Education Act which is the U.S. national education law and longstanding commitment to equal opportunity for all students. Uh, the previous version of the law was the No Child Left Behind Act, and it uses multiple measures referred to as indicators to evaluate schools. Uh, each individual school is rated on those indicators and placed into one of four categories, and we are pleased to share that Addison Trail and Willowbrook are rated as commendable schools, the second highest rating, and we look forward to improving in that in the future. Uh, we're also proud to share that District 88 remains above the state level with our four, five, and six-year graduation rates, which accounts for 50% of our evaluation under ESSA. We are above the state level with regard to the number of freshmen who are on track to graduate from high school as well, which is another ESSA indicator. Uh, college and career readiness is the third area measured by ESSA. And District 88 is above the state level with the number of students who are enrolled in college 12 months and 16 months after graduating from high school. Students from Addison Trail class of 2018 are attending colleges and universities in 15 states and were accepted to more than 130 colleges and universities. We also had a record number of students enroll at advanced placement college level courses in 2017-18, which provide an opportunity for students to earn college credit while in high school. Uh, we continue to pursue and implement dual credit and career certification opportunities for our students as well. And we partner with the Greater Oak Brook Chamber of Commerce and the Addison Workforce Development Committee to provide our students with real world experiences. Our vision and goals and framework align with ESSA, and we are in the process of updating the district strategic plan to retool and enhance our existing 2010 plan and to ensure our focus remains on accomplishing our mission of working for the continuous improvement of student achievement. In the area of technology, we implemented a new delivery model for instructional technology this school year to benefit our students. We have redirected funds previously used to buy Chromebooks and laptop carts 
Uh, that num money is now being used to provide each freshman, starting with the class of 2022, with a Chromebook for in-school and out-of-school academic use. We will phase in this model to ensure the most cost-effective, efficient, and high-quality uh, implementation. Uh, our current uh, Chromebook and laptop carts will remain available for upperclassmen, and Ascent Trail and Willowbrook also have six labs with wired desktop computers, which will be maintained as well. Uh, we know enhancing technology in classrooms uh, provides teachers with more tools to enrich the high-quality learning environment for our students. We also work hard to reduce costs for taxpayers through cooperative purchasing and sharing services with other, um, with other local agencies. These include the joint contract with School Districts 4, uh, 45, 48 regarding assessment and curriculum planning, and intergovernmental agreements with the Addison Public Library to host the District 88 transition programs, Perks and Possibilities Cafe, which is run in part by students with special needs, uh, being a member of the Technology Center of DuPage, which offers DuPage County area high school juniors and seniors career and technical education programs as part of their high school curriculum. Being a member of the School Association for Special Education in DuPage County, joining with Glenbard District 87 and Ombudsman Plus to create our own alternative outside placement program to provide a local cost-effective and higher quality option to better meet the needs of our students and also working with the villages of Addison and Villa Park to buy fuel and salt. As a school board member, uh, it's disheartening to know that there is an increased need to focus on school safety. Uh, we want to assure uh, you the safety and well-being of our students, staff, and community members is our top priority. And we continue to look at ways to improve our security measures. Uh, a couple bullet points on that. This past spring, we hosted a school safety forum where about 400 students, uh, student leaders from 28 uh, different Chicago area high schools came together for a day of conversation and planning regarding school safety. Also partnered with the Addison Police Department to host a safety and security tabletop exercise with local first responders, staff members, and students. Uh, at the beginning of this school year, we adopted new excuse me, procedures to ensure our buildings follow best practices with regard to school safety. District 88 administrators, staff members, and students received training in these procedures, and we worked with the Addison and Villa Park Police Departments to implement ALICE training, which stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. Uh, the Addison Police Department, District 88, and the Addison School District 4 recently worked together to, uh, to receive and received a grant from the Department of Justice, Office of Community Oriented po Policing Services, excuse me, COPS for short, for the School Violence and Prevention Program. With the funding from this grant, District 88, District 4 buy and install a, a rapid emergency response system in all school facilities through Blue Point Alert Systems. This system includes pull stations similar to fire alarms, strobe lights, mobile panic buttons that will be placed throughout the schools and outside the buildings. Uh, the DuPage Regional Office of Education has received a three-year grant called STOP, uh, which stands for Students, Teachers, Officers Preventing, School Violence and Mental Health Training Program for grant uh, from the Department of Justice. Program is countywide. Process, uh, Excuse me, the program is a countywide process to train students and educators through a com comprehensive trauma informed care approach that focuses on prevention of school violence due to unmet mental health needs. Uh, at District 88, we value our open and transparent communication with our stakeholders, and we frequently update our website, electronic newsletter, and social media to keep the public up to date with the happenings of our schools. We encourage you to visit, visit our uh, website, www.dupage88.net, where you can stay connected with the news about the district, sign up for our newsletter, and join our social media. We know our success is a result of our partnerships, and we look forward to working with the community to keep improving our schools. Thank you for your continued support as we work together to accomplish our mission of working for the continuous improvement of student achievement. Thank you, Tom. A lot of achievements there for the, for the high school. Our last speaker 
uh, is uh, Rich Beanstra. He is the mayor of Village of Addison. He's a 47-year resident and been on the board for 27 years and mayor for six years. The Village of Addison was established by referendum of incorporation on September 8, 1884. The elected officials consist of a mayor, a village clerk, six village, and six village trustees. The village portion of your property tax bill is 9%. And if, if I get this right, the school district is older than the village by two years. So I'm, I'm not sure on that. They, they were the trendsetters. Uh, yeah, they were, well, they were, yeah, 1842, a lot earlier than the village of Addison. So, uh, Mayor? Good evening. I want to thank Itasca Bank for once again sponsoring The Shape of Addison and to give a special thanks to Jack for minor, um, moderating tonight's presentation. I also want to recognize my colleagues whose help, support, expertise, and involvement have been critical in moving our community forward. They are Village Clerk Lucille Zaccaro, Deputy Mayor Tom Hunley, Trustees Harry Theodore, Bill Lynch, Joe McDermott, Kathy Klusny, Sam Nasty, Assistant Manager John Burley, Police Director Bill Hayden, as well as our entire management team. I'm happy to report that 2018 has been another very successful year for Addison. We continue to be financially stable, and we continue to see new renewed interest in commercial, industrial, and residential development, and progress continues to be made in improving the quality of life for our residents. In the area of finance, our bond rating, which is critical in securing the most favorable credit rates, was reaffirmed as AA plus, and we were able to maintain an unrestricted fund balance of 34%, due in large part to the diligent work of our staff in maintaining a fiscally responsible operation while ensuring high quality service levels. To enhance our ability to provide quality service and outcomes in this area, a total upgrade of our financial software, including permit tracking and other features that will enhance customer service and improve efficiency began in 2018 and will be completed in the next several months. We continue to be aggressive in our pursuit of both state and federal grants, and as recently as last week received a $300,000 CDBG grant for the Roseanne Drive Bridge and Water Main Replacement Project. This past year, we were once again the recipient of the government finance awards for both the budget and the CAFR. And the bottom line is that the village continues to be very strong financially. In the area of community development, 2018 saw many projects completed and many more projects begun. On the east side of town, ground was broken and construction begun on a 122-room Wood Spring Suites Hotel. Located on the site of the old and infamous Addison Motel is scheduled to be open later this year. The anticipated western access to O'Hare has begun to spark interest in development opportunities along Lake Street east of Villa and we're currently in a very preliminary discussions with a developer regarding potential projects. Wintrust, sorry Jack, Wintrust Addison Bank and Trust completed the build out of their new facility adjacent to First Family Dental on Lake Street in record time. They opened the business in May and have immediately become very active members of our business community. Dunkley's Cafe has met with several construction delays over the past year but in a recent meeting with the owner, I was assured that they would be opening by mid-March. Green Meadow Plaza welcomed the addition of Lou Malnati's Pizza in Celebrations Fashion to their shopping center. With the opening of Lorena's Banquets, a facility with the capacity to host up to 600 guests, the long-awaited Lake Street Commons revitalization project has finally been completed. Across from Lake Street Commons, the $5 million Caputo's project which included modernization, expansion, and a total facade upgrade was completed and a ribbon cutting took place earlier this month. Continued vibrant growth of the central part of town lies in the options available with a 16-acre Lutherbrook property. While no plans are currently in place, at our urging, the broker is concentrating on owner-occupied residential and commercial uses. A little further to the west, the proposed Park Point of Addison Senior Residential <clears throat> excuse me, senior residential project cited for the vacant Oxford Bank property was put on hold due to the untimely death of the developer. The project is again moving forward and we're currently awaiting plans for a skilled nursing and assisted living center at that site. Shifting to the west side of town, the February 1st opening of Export Fitness in Centennial Plaza 
will, will continue the revitalization of that center. And the much anticipated answer to what's going on at the old Applebee's is Local 20 Urban Kitchen. Operated by the owners of Brunch Cafe, this full service restaurant and bar is anticipated to open in midsummer. A large driver for the centennial development continues to be Clarendale Senior Housing of Addison, a 215,000 square foot facility located on five acres of land between Marcus Cinema and the Hampton Inn and Suites. This $45 million construction project began last year and is scheduled for completion late this summer. Operated by Life Care Services, this market rate facility will feature 98 independent, 54 assisted, and 38 memory care units along with a full dining room, a pub, fitness center, spa, billiards, and a bistro. And yes, Virginia, there is a Bucky's. The long awaited and often questioned construction of the new Bucky's mobile station at Lake and Rolling Road was completed in early 2018 and includes eight pump state islands, a car wash, and a 4,000 square foot convenience center. The new question for 2019 is what's happening at Fuddruckers? Ongoing design issues have slowed completion of what is to be a banquet and conference center. The maintenance of the property has been an issue and our inspectors have written citations. The property owner has been notified that the conditions are unacceptable and cleanup of the area and completion of the project is required to avoid legal action. We've already seen progress on that since we've had that discussion with them. The learning experience, a 10,000 square foot academy for early education is scheduled for construction later this year and will occupy a commercial space on Rolling Road. We anticipate the annexation of the DeMarco Plaza and the BP gas station west of the plaza that will occur by year's end. Clearly, we're continuing to see reinvestment, renovation, and new businesses coming to much of Lake Street. This trend will continue as we continue to market Lake Street as a service, dining, and entertainment corridor. On the manufacturing and industrial front, we remain the fourth largest industrial park in the state and are experiencing a robust 96% occupancy rate. An indicator of the vi uh, viability of our industrial sector is the number of businesses that have chosen to expand and reinvest in our community. SWD has just completed its third expansion of its facility. Porter Pipe is in the process of adding an additional 86,000 square feet to their building. Carey Company has just completed a 100,000 square foot addition to their facility. Clyde's Delicious Donuts has nearly doubled the size of their facility. But just as we see the growth and strengthening of the industrial sector, the lack of job ready, uh, a job ready for workforce continues to threaten many businesses. Last year I mentioned the Workforce Development Task Force that I established bringing together industrial leaders from our community, educators, and village government to focus on developing a strong interconnectivity between local businesses, working with the College of DuPage, Tech Center of DuPage, and the District 88 to develop job-specific training programs, to implement student shadowing and internship programs, and to train and utilize the prospective job force that is available within our community. The work of the task force continues this year with the same initiatives in addition to what has been designated as the College of DuPage Addison Project. This is a pilot program that matches educational requirements of specific job descriptions with educational offerings from the College of DuPage in addition to on-the-job experience. Once the program is operational in Addison, it will be rolled out to all of DuPage County. Residential growth and development remain a high priority in 2018. In addition to the two senior living centers, we saw the build out of two major residential projects, the Enclave at Mill Creek and the Woodland, home, uh, Woodland Townhomes. The Enclave located at the old Addison Golf Course will have 87 single family maintenance free homes designed to meet the needs of empty nesters. 21 units of the 44 unit phase one have been sold with an average price of $450,000. Phase two with 43 homes is expected to break ground in spring. The Woodland Town homes located on Rolling Road and Woodland Avenue are nearing completion. This 19 unit ranch townhome project features first floor master bedrooms in a price range of $350,000 to $400,000. These two projects in addition to Clarendale Senior Housing 
and our existing housing stack will provide Addison residents and prospective residents with a full range of housing options from starter to family to empty nesters to independent and assisted living. We now have a full continuum of housing options that will allow you to start in Addison and stay in Addison. In terms of infrastructure improvement, the Byron Avenue Water Main Replacement and Resurfacing Project, a $1.85 million contract, including a $400,000 CBG, CB, CDBG, excuse me, grant was completed. The Army Trail Road Water Main Replacement and Resurfacing Project to replace a 50-year-old water main between Lombard and Mill Roads was completed last year. This $3.7 million project received $1.2 million in federal funding grants. This year we'll see additional water main extensions, resurfacing projects, and upgrades to our facilities that will help to maintain the aesthetics and the functionality of our community. As a result of the May storm event, which most of us remember, several drainage improvement projects and studies are being planned throughout the village throughout the summer. In June, we saw completion of the Village Green project, which included a walking path, lighting, and electrical upgrades, better ADA access, a permanent location for vendors, and a stage pad. These enhancements have allowed us to better accommodate the growing number of attendees at Rock and Wheels and provide the opportunity to stage other programs throughout the year. Our goal of developing a venue for our residents to relax, interact with friends and neighbors, and to celebrate our community is being achieved. With the help of our Special Events Commission, more activities to complement the tree lighting and Fall Fest will be added. After a 10-year absence, 2018 saw the return of a parade to Addison. In conjunction with the Medina Shriners, we formally celebrated the Illinois Bicentennial with a parade followed by a Bicentennial Bash. The parade featured more than 60 community groups and 30 Shriner units. Because of this year's success, the Addison Medina Shriners Parade will be an annual event, so mark your calendars for Sunday, August 25th. In terms of quality of life, both for residents as well as for business, a safe community is essential. It's the village's responsibility to provide that safe environment. Programs like crime-free housing, community policing, DARE, certs, Shop with a Hero continue to distinguish our police department as the premier police department in the county. Their efforts and quality of their work are reflected in Addison's 18% reduction in overall crime uh, compared to the previous year. A grand opening and dedication was held on January 29th for the Addison Consolidated Dispatch Center. This state-of-the-art public safety answering point serves more than 15 area police, fire, and EMS agencies. The facility also serves as a backup operation to DUCOM Dispatch Center, now operating from the DuPage County Complex in Wheaton. <clears throat> With 15 other communities and agencies utilizing our dispatch services, Addison has demonstrated how consolidation and cooperation among government agencies can result in improved quality of service levels while lowering the cost to taxpayers. Technology and transparency remain a high priority. Our website, addisonadvantage.org, has been upgraded to be more user-friendly and to allow users to complete, uh, complete online forms and applications. It continues to be a prime source of information about our village, along with our other communication portals, including ithappensinaddison.com, our online e newsletter, Facebook, Twitter, our YouTube channel, and Code Red, all are readily accessible from our homepage of our website. As I said before, Addis is a unique community and it has unique resources, location, and a spirit that is unmatched by other communities. Our various governmental agencies, service organizations, members of our business community and church groups individually do remarkable things, but we are a community and that suggests collaborative actions and involvement that promote the common good as well as the indiv individual good. We must continue to work together to break down silos, to share expertise and resources, and to solidify a common vision for Addison, for now and for the future. Over the past year, we have again seen remarkable results when groups work together to achieve their individual goals as well as to help build community. Memorial Day continues to grow as a major collaborative effort of our community. 
Our church leadership council, composed of pastors of local churches, brought their individual congregations together to celebrate an interfaith Thanksgiving service, to participate in a live nativity scene the night of our tree lighting, to celebrate an evening of prayer for unity, and to participate in food and clothing drives for the less fortunate of our village. Nothing could be more reflective of who we are as a community than the Mayor's Community Charity Ball. Again, this year, through the generosity of our friends and residents, we raised over $60,000 to support the needs of 17 local charities. As I first said, this has been a very good year for Addison, and much has been accomplished, and much has changed. One change that must be noted is the retirement of our village manager, Joe Black. Joe served our community for 32 years and demonstrated leadership skills and expertise that were key to the remarkable growth that we've seen over those years. While we will miss his leadership, perhaps Joe's greatest accomplishment is building the management team that we have today. He has left the village in very good hands. We wish Joe well in the retirement that he has certainly earned and thank him for his service to Edison. But as always, there's much more work to be done. As the economy continues to strengthen, we will see economic opportunities develop that we must be ready to grasp. Edison is recognized as a leader in DuPage County. We have been on the forefront of innovation and a leader in demonstrating that unity of purpose and a willingness to collaborate with each other strengthens and builds all sectors of our community. <coughs> We as independent governmental entities must work together in conjunction with our residents and our businesses to maximize our resources, our talents, and our efforts to give Addison the competitive advantage to continue to lead and not follow other communities. The future of Addison is and will continue to be bright as long as we together recognize our individual value and just as importantly, recognize the power and advantage of working together with all elements of our community. For only in that unity and spirit of cooperation can we fully realize the Addison advantage. Thank you for the opportunity for being here tonight and the privilege of being your mayor. Seventy town meetings, and you're the first mayor to get a clapping, so applause. So that's great. Very happy I'm done. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, if, I, if I'm going to read the questions, uh, some of these may have been answered already by the uh, panel people up here. They can either uh, say that or they can address the question again. I'm not up, it's, it's like when I was in school, I'm not paying attention up here, uh, like I wasn't paying attention in school. So I'm trying to read through the questions so I understand them and, uh, uh, and get them in order. Uh, and the NIU students, uh, they haven't submitted many questions, so I don't know if they were just waiting for the mayor to get done to send them in or not, but uh, uh, we could use a few more from them. Uh, we'll try to get through everything. We'll go as quickly as we can. Um, this one's very timely for the mayor. How is the federal government shutdown affecting the Addison community? Well, it's not affecting us directly at this point. Um, you know, certainly there are our residents of our village that work for the federal government, so it's impacting them individually at this point. But uh, we're hopeful that uh, cooler heads prevail in Washington and both sides realize that they're there to serve us. And uh, right now they're not doing that. So uh, we're hoping to see better outcomes in the very near future. Another one for the mayor. When is the police department going to correct the problem of the Lake Street car wash? Cars are lined up going eastbound trying to get into the car wash and backing up traffic in both directions. And that's why Director Hayden's here. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one coming. Um, you know, this is a double-edged sword because they do generate quite a bit of revenue in the village of Addison. And uh, when the facility was designed, they increased capacity tremendously uh, from the old facility. And in addition to that, IDOT um, actually approved all the plans of egress and ingress uh, into the facility and outside of the facility. It just happens to be a very, very, very popular car wash. And it's, uh, it's, it's I'll be honest with you, it's difficult to enforce. Uh, we can be down there, all we can do is uh, move the cars forward. Uh, the vehicles that are stopped in the right lane, they're not doing anything illegal on Lake Street. Um, they're just waiting to make their turn into the car wash. So. And we wouldn't want to ticket those residents uh, anyways. 
We've talked to the owners of the car wash. Uh, they help out uh, whenever they can. Um, it's just, uh, to be honest with you, it's difficult to manage, but we, we, we do the best we can. And uh, especially those snow days, uh, uh, our uh, nice sunny day following a snow day, that's when it's the busiest. Um, that's about all I have on that one. For the mayor, why, why did the Caputo store delay in opening? I heard that the village held up their permit. Uh, it caused the village to lose tax dollars. Well, first of all, rumors in our community are rampant. And uh, I wish before they become rumors, people would come and ask us what really was going on. Uh, the reality is Caputo's changed their contractor uh, their architect, uh, they had a project envisioned initially. Uh, they got partially through it, and John could actually uh, collaborate on this. Uh, they realized that what was being developed was way over their budgeting area. They brought in another contractor, they revised the plans, and that caused delays. The village never held up any of their permitting. We worked very closely with them. And uh, we are very happy to see that they are open for business and uh, they're doing very well. That's one of the reasons why we like putting on these town meetings to clear up all the rumors and the uh, uh, facts that aren't quite accurate. So it's a, it's a good service. For the Park District, why does Addison need to need a tax funded golf facility and fitness center? Multiple gyms that are not tax funded are available and Export fitness, export fitness will have all the same amenities for the same price. Well, thank you. Um, with regards to the new uh, fitness center that is uh, export, um, Club Fitness was the first fitness center um, of quality and standards. Uh, built in Addison and we still uphold the standards of quality of fitness uh, that are an a la carte menu. Our mission statement is fitness for your lifestyle and that's what we propose to do and continue to do at the Addison Park District. Whether it's um, a playground, a fitness center, or a golf facility. The fitness center did was part of a uh, citizens advisory commission made up of a plethora of individuals from the village that came and advised us as to what the village wanted. At that time, the the uh, um, park district was looking at potentially purchasing an ice rink. The Citizens Advisory Committee, that's your neighbors, um, we didn't pick them, they came in and told us to build a fitness center and to build Putters Peak. And we listened and that's what we did. Thank you. And anything more, John? For the mayor, why did the village approve townhouses at Route 53 in Woodland without a retention pond? Residents along Woodland all flooded after the May 31st rains. Isn't there a building code for building so close to a major road? There is, and uh, if people have been watching the village board meeting for the last month and a half, there is one particular resident that's very upset with the project. We actually did ask residents that live in the area about the project before we approved it. We've been very diligent in working to make sure that all of the village codes have been met and uh, John, if you want to kind of add to that. Th thank you, Mayor, certainly. There is a detention basin that goes with the project, <clears throat> which is standard uh, in Addison for the last 40, 50 years. Uh, we're very conscious of uh, actually improving drainage and stormwater management with new uh, developments. So uh, if you look a little closer on the uh, south end of the project, there's a detention basin that's uh, functioning. It's not completed at this point. Uh, weather uh, has caused some delays in that completion, but uh, it will be fully functioning. It is functioning now, be fully functioning completed uh, this summer, along with the rest of the townhomes. Uh, the entire community, in fact, the entire Chicagoland area had drainage problems May 31st last year. Uh, that we kind of think that was more mother nature than uh, uh, the perceived lack of detention basin at a townhome project that actually does have a detention basin. 
for the mayor. Routinely, I walk Lake Street and Addison Roads. The businesses never remove the snow on the sidewalk, especially Walgreens. Aren't they supposed to remove the snow? Okay. Uh, we do not have a code that requires uh, adjacent commercial property owners to remove snow. Uh, the village itself's crews will get out on spot basis and like school crossings, heavy, heavily pedestrian areas, and clear sidewalks. Uh, it, it is going to be a little bit after a major storm because our first uh, goal is to clear the streets, cul-de-sacs around the community. Uh, we also have issues with visibility, exiting uh, driveway, exiting properties along Lake Street. We take care of those as a storm subsides and we're able to get to them. Uh, here's our first one from the uh, Northern Illinois class. It's group five from there. Uh, how is the village preparing to make the transition from a retired village administrator to a new village administrator, both fluid and efficient for both staff and residents? Well, as I mentioned, uh, one of uh, Mr. Black's legacies was leaving an extremely strong management team behind. And uh, as the uh, village mayor, I'm also uh, the chief executive officer of the village. And uh, my responsibility is appointment of the village manager, among other things. Uh, what we've chosen to do is to evaluate the role of the village manager. Uh, Joe had held that position for 32 years, and uh, we felt that this is a good time to evaluate the role, responsibilities, and uh, to really make an evaluation before we formally appoint a new village manager. So uh, what I am doing right now is delegating some of the roles of the village manager to some of our department heads, and uh, I'm working uh, full-time in the village office, in the mayor's office, but also uh, taking responsibility for the village manager's position at this point. Uh, this is for the library. I recently heard that our library is running a surplus. Could you confirm this? Share how much the surplus is, if there is a surplus, and if so, what is planned for it? We learned at last year's Shape of Addison that our library employs a social worker. Is our library unique in having this position? Do other libraries in our neighboring communities have social workers? How prevalent is this practice? Is there a job description for this position? Does the social worker keep a log and share internally with the board? I think they're applying for the position. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, I think the, the best way to get answers to all of these questions because they require some detailed responses is to, to uh, do a request for public information. But uh, to answer the first question, uh, we do not operate on a surplus basis. We budget with the intent to fund, uh, to spend every dollar. However, uh, as things happen, that's not always possible. Uh, if we lose a staff member and that position is vacant for a while, uh, we are not paying out that salary or the benefits and therefore there is some money left over at the end of the year. Um, so I, first of all, I'd like to know what you mean by a surplus. However, those funds that are not spent are the, transferred into our capital uh, project fund and the, that fund <coughs> can only be spent for things that are directly related to uh, the building, uh, assets over a specific dollar amount, um, and has to be developed over a long period of time in order to uh, provide funds for uh, emergencies, uh, for repairs, uh, for uh, timely replacement of items that are worn out during, after the end of their useful life. Um, we did have a large amount of money that was earmarked for the capital project, projects fund, 
uh, in our operating budget, but on our books, it was it was designated uh, in our minds to be part of the capital projects funds. This past uh, summer, we moved that money into specific uh, investment funds that delineate that the that fund money is is only for capital projects uh, as far as the social worker goes uh, there are a few social workers in the Illinois that work for libraries um, there aren't many but it is a trend throughout the nation to pro provide this kind of service and the services that are provided are not your typical services when you think about a social worker given making counseling individuals about uh, any number of things these are helping individuals to use the library resources to find appropriate solutions for their needs the reason why it's a social worker is because a social worker is highly skilled and trained in knowing about those services so it's it's just as if we had a librarian who specialized in nuclear physics if we were in a community filled with in individuals interested in, in nuclear physics uh, it's a simplistic analogy and it, and it might not answer your question but uh, you can come to the library anytime and ask to talk to to me to Mary, our executive director, or fill out a uh, freedom of information request for your specific answers. Hey, I have another question for the library, and I think it just ties right into what you have. It says, how much money is in the library reserve, which I guess is different from a surplus? Well, we have, uh, well, there is, again, there is no surplus. There are the, the capital and projects fund, as I mentioned, is specifically allocated for uh, items such as phase two, which I hope we will eventually get to, but um, at any rate, um, as I mentioned before, maintenance of, of the facility in terms of its physical um, condition and emergencies and repairs um, and again assets that are over a specific amount uh, at this time I believe we have about 14 million dollars in that fund which is probably just about enough to build phase two however uh, as was mentioned in in my comments earlier uh, we will be engaging uh, uh, either an architectural firm or a, a different kind of firm that does specifically evaluations of the physical plants for uh, public entities to assess when we'll need to replace our roof, when we'll need to replace our air conditioning unit and heating unit, when we may need to, to provide some other kind of, of uh, retrofitting to comply with new standards. Um, all those things need money and instead of either reducing services or drastically incre increasing our, our tax levy, uh, it's best to have money planned and added to, to so that we can draw from it when it's needed. As far as our operating budget, we have approximately six months of, of funds, of, of operating funds in our budget. And this is to accommodate the delay in tax receipts. Our fiscal year starts uh, May 1st. 
the first tax collection isn't until June 1st. And the first mo month that we get any funds from the county is July 1st. So uh, we were, that's three months where we have no new income. So if we spent everything during our fiscal year, we would not be able to have services for the first three months of our next fiscal year. So we're allowed under state law to reserve some of the operating money, which has accumulated some a little bit at a time, so that we would have that cushion. Uh, now we could have also asked for a, a one-time 2% uh, tax. Uh, we tried to do that in 1980, and uh, the village wouldn't let us float a referendum for that. So we did the next best thing. Uh, we, we planned and, and, and through savings that we're able to, to accumulate those funds. And it's all to the benefit of the taxpayers in the long run. Mayor, you're off the hook. You were in high school back in 1980, I think, so. I wish. Uh, this is for directed to all the taxing bodies, so whoever wants to answer. While my property value is stagnant, my real estate taxes rate rise every year more than the rate of inflation. When will you start cutting budgets or reduce our taxes to allow me to stay in my home? Feel free to jump in. Well, as I mentioned, uh, the library has for the two, past two taxing years kept our levy flat. So that if, if you saw an increase in what you were paying to the library, it is only due to changes in the value of your property. Any other taxing bodies? No, okay. No, we can't take questions from that. Please write them down and, and but just write it down and bring it up and we'll, we'll get to it. Um, the TVs can't pick up the sound. Uh, for the mayor, my neighbor parks his car every night, overnight in front of my house. Rarely two times in two years, he gets a ticket. Recently his car got plowed in and he just pulled out of the front way and still no ticket. Isn't there a law against this? There is a restriction on overnight parking throughout the village. Uh, if we're made aware of the of violation, we will be out there and uh, our police department uh, routinely looks for those violations. Bill, if you wanna elaborate. Yeah, the mayor is uh, absolutely correct. Um, the midnight shift, that's their job and typically when they cruise the neighborhoods and are checking everything out, um, and they run into an overnight parker that doesn't have permission, uh, they'll issue a ticket. Another way that we issue tickets is when neighbors call in, such as this. So if, the, if that person uh, that submitted the question is watching right now, please give me a call tomorrow. Uh, give me the address, and uh, we will check that out for you. Okay. Uh, for the uh, fire district, please describe the need that arose that led to SWAT level training. It seems excessive for a town like Addison. Joey, I'll let you handle it because you're more involved with it. We believe being good partners is important to the area. The SWAT team not only covers Addison, but it also covers everywhere from, and help me out, Chief, help me out. It comes from the, um, the Wisconsin border all the way down south, so it encompasses how many towns? It encompasses over 100 communities right now. It's uh, NIPAS, the Northern Illinois Police Alarm System. And what they needed, they had, a, they had a strong need for paramedics to help out with this team. So talking with the Board of Trustees, they felt that it'd be a good partner to work with the, with the area police departments and be able to be the first responders for the police officers that are involved. The police officers should get shot or injured in the line of duty while issuing a, um, a search warrant or some type of hostage situation. Uh, we want to be there to help them. The Board is very supportive of the police department. On a side note, by them receiving this training, it does come back to our community and it helps train our personnel to deal with mass casualties and deal with shootings that may happen in Addison. So these three individuals that are on, these t on this team are highly qualified, highly trained, 
and able to participate at a very high level, plus bring the training back to our members, to the police department. The police department also has members on the SWAT team and back to our village and help us train our members to deal with these incidents in our town. So I think it's a very small investment for what we receive. And if, I, if I could just oh, add sure. one thing to that, the Addison Fire Protection District is very forward thinking on that issue. Um, uh, Chief Leone is absolutely correct. They are there on scene at the time. They're not only addressing the injuries of any uh, police or uh, emergency response personnel, but in a mass casualty incident, the police keep moving forward and the uh, NIPAS paramedics move in behind us to remove injured parties ahead of time. They're on scene in a hot scene, which has never happened before. They're very forward thinking. For the mayor, what is the latest on the new businesses in Centennial Plaza? Uh, well, we already talked about the uh, Applebee's uh, renovation. Uh, exports will be opening February 1st. Um, we are anticipating there's a possibility that there's a uh, laboratory also going to be moving into that area. That's very preliminary. We met with them uh, several months ago. Um, we uh, are disappointed with firehouse subs uh, leaving. Uh, that was an issue where the uh, person who held the franchise had three other or two other restaurants that he was trying to run at the same time and Financially, he just couldn't make it, so we're anticipating that uh, a new venture will come into that area. But uh, it, it's moving along, and uh, we're happy to see the progress that's being made right now. Good. For the high school, what are the schools doing to address the shortage of skilled tradespeople versus college-bound students? Not all kids are college-bound, but electricians, mechanics, carpenters, plumbers, etc., are in short supply. I'll probably ask Scott this, but the um, we do we are very uh, well entrenched in the trades with the um, uh, courses that we offer. As far as um, you know, your your uh, auto shops and your your um, stuff like that. We also are tied into the uh, uh, DuPage uh, technology deal. Um, and we, we're very supportive of that, in fact, uh, more so than, than others. Uh, maybe, Scott, you want to expound a little bit? And as we, tr as we transition from No Child Left Behind to ESSA, the big part of ESSA, and we, we really look at now our college readiness numbers and our career readiness numbers. We're monitoring career certifications, like uh, Mr. Edmeyer said, in, in career and technical education. We're looking at the number of students who get career credentials. Uh, Addison Trail is one of only five schools nationally that offer NATEF certification for our autos program. We offer food handling certificates. Uh, with our work on the Workforce Development Board that Mayor, Leinster, Mayor Veenster put together, we've got uh, businesses now working with colleges of DuPage using the businesses in Addison to get kids credentialed in on-the-job training so they can walk out. And, and a lot of our employers will pay for their college at the College of DuPage while they're learning their skills so they don't have this massive college debt in their learning skills. So a lot of movement in this area in, in, in continuously working and, and looking at best practice models throughout the country because we know this is a big piece because we, we can't continue to sell the college myth because kids are graduating from college with unbelievable debt and no skills. So it, it's really important and why and why not use Addison and uh, uh, the reauthorizations of the Perkins grant and, and things on the federal level that, that have helped us. They're giving more money for internships and apprenticeships locally. So utilizing all those dollars and the connections that we have now with, we've got the businesses in our community sitting with our schools working together from high school, from Addison Trail to the Tech Center of DuPage, through College of DuPage and the businesses in Addison and DuPage County. So the, you know, the, that's kind of the movement that we've created. Uh, and it's just, we've gotten a lot of questions here uh, while we've been answering questions up here. So if I can get all the participants to try to be as quick as possible so we can try to get through all of these questions. Um, so we've gotten a lot of good questions here. For the mayor. Why isn't it a requirement for businesses to get approval to open the following? Tattoo store, pawn shops, 24-hour spa, and medical marijuana shop. They do have to. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously some of those businesses are not what we would like to see. 
Uh, the tattoo parlors, for the most part, are in unincorporated parts of our community. Uh, the medical marijuana, that is a state-directed uh, program, and uh, Addison, for whatever reason, was chosen to have two dispensaries. Uh, I'm sure with what's being talked about in Springfield, that whole situation is going to be changing, and uh, hopefully for the better. But, uh, you know, most business, in fact, all businesses have to be licensed by, by the village. Okay, just kind of, this one's perfect lead-in. Uh, what are the plans for unincorporated Addison? Well, it depends. I mean, our ultimate goal would be to have everything annexed in. Uh, but when you do annex, you have to uh, grandfather existing conditions in those properties. So we have to be judicious as far as if there's something that is approved by the county, but something that we would not approve, if we force annex them in, we have to allow them to continue that use. So uh, it's a matter of really negotiating and working with the different businesses and john you've got a couple of examples probably that you could talk about uh, you're correct mayor it, it is a, a delicate uh, issue uh when you start c contemplating uh an involuntary annexation uh you really do give up a lot of your negotiating uh leverage in those situations uh but we do continue to annex uh, quite a bit of property on an annual basis this year uh, the mayor mentioned in his opening remarks at the addison motel uh, came into town and is being redeveloped uh, so the old place will be a distant memory very soon we're very happy to get that hotel on the east side of town uh, the east side of town seems to be awakening there and there's a lot of unincorporated property on the east side of town <clears throat> one of the problems is uh, a lot of the uh, unincorporated uh, situations are they're very small lots they're shallow they're not conducive to redevelopment by themselves so that they need to be assembled uh, by a developer we're also working closely with uh, a uh, industrial developer at the uh, southeast corner of Swift and Lake Street the uh, there's five or six unincorporated properties just north of DeVry uh, and that's very close to coming under contract uh, with all six owners uh, these things take time in that individual situation a particular situation we've been working on that for five years uh, working with the county doing code enforcement activity uh, to try and again leverage our our situation and uh, negotiate uh, a, a quality product once the property does come into the community uh, you know the loss of the Addison Motel so many people can't sleep anymore oh wait nobody ever slept there yeah okay I'm sorry they measured it in hours, not days. Uh, for the village, uh, good luck with this one. There are too many coyotes in our neighborhood. <laughs> well, I guess that means that there's less other animals that the coyotes feed on, so that may be a good thing. Uh, that's a problem throughout Cook County, or DuPage County uh, and the area. Uh, as you develop undeveloped properties, uh, those are the normal nesting places for these animals. They have some place to go. They need some place to go. And, you know, I, I saw a picture as recently as this afternoon, a coyote in front of a garage. Mm. So, yeah, they're in the area. Uh, you know, we tell our, our residents to be careful and cautious about it, especially if they have small animals. But that's just one of the things that we have to deal with. For the library, if you issue bonds, doesn't that create debt? which either way taxpayers will need to pay for. How do your projects save us money which we need to pay off either way? Well, first of all, the, the, the library cannot issue bonds on its own. We are a municipal library and therefore fall under a um, legal relationship with the village and the village must both approve our levy and, and also, if, if bonds were to be issued, the village would be the responsible party to issue them. Yeah, let me just clarify also. Uh, by state statute, uh, municipal libraries are autonomous in that they develop their own budget, they develop their own action plan, and they run their organization based on their elected trustees, their board of directors. Uh, for some reason, the state decided that local libraries, municipal libraries, cannot levy. So the responsibility of a levy, the library board says this is the money we need. 
because they cannot legally levy the municipal government, the village has to, by state statute, forward that levy and levy that tax. We do not control it. We do not support or oppose it. It's something that we have to do as a matter of fact. Uh, we are a home rule community, which means we have more autonomy than other uh, non-home rule communities. Non-home rule communities clearly have to levy those taxes. There's been some discussion whether non-home rule uh, or home rule communities have the authority to say to the library, no, we don't feel that's a fair tax, we're not gonna do it. That's never been challenged in court. Our attorneys are telling us that we probably can't do that. So essentially, by default, the village has to levy what is recommended by the library board. So that's kind of the relationship. Uh, they give us what they need. We have to then levy the uh, request. I, I knew there was another question here, and this is directed to the park district, but uh, it's not, we don't really need it as a question. Uh, we've seen Coyote and Cherokee Park. Uh, this one seems threatening. And then it says, can we get a trapper? And I think the answer is no to that. And, and just uh, a little clarification with regards to coyotes. Um, my uh, coyotes have been tracked by the DuPage County Forest Preserve and uh, in cooperation with Cook County Forest Preserve districts. They're being tracked from Wisconsin down to Indiana, and these are migrant creatures. They really don't stay in one area um, for very long. They continually move. Um, currently, um, they are uh, breeding. This is the time for them uh, within the next few weeks, so you will be seeing more and more coyote activity uh, throughout the entire DuPage and Cook County, uh, Lake County areas. Thank you. So this one in Cherokee Park will visit all the other parks as it's migrating? I, I, I certainly hope that it does uh, uh, take a tour of our fine parks in Addison. Tell them there's a toll road and they can get out of town quick. Uh, this is directed to everybody, uh, so you can jump in if you would like. In view of the current opioid, opioid epidemic, should Addison fight the move to legalize marijuana and expose our children to this scourge? Colorado law enforcement has document, documented increased traffic fatalities, fatalities and crimes uh, sweeping the drug uh, since the drug was legalized. Uh, well, I'll take that question. I serve on the uh, county heroin task force and uh, I have some, as a pharmacist, some very strong feelings about that. Uh, it concerns me gravely that the state is looking at legalized marijuana as a answer to our financial problems. We've worked very diligently at the Addison level for years with the Substance Res Responsibility Commission, with the high school, with the elementary schools to uh, work with our children to prevent drug abuse. Um, we're concerned about it. We, we have some real issues as far as how it's gonna be administered, uh, you know, you get arguments that it's no different than alcohol, and if we allow alcohol, why are we concerned about marijuana? But uh, it, it's just another problem that we're gonna be facing. We already are dealing and spending millions of dollars in prevention and education for uh, other drugs, uh, and this is just gonna exacerbate the problem. So uh, the HOPE Task Force at the county level is looking at this very closely, and uh, uh, certainly we're very concerned, and. Uh, until we hear more as far as how it would be regulated, how it would be controlled. Uh, we have some very strong feelings of opposition to it right now. Anybody else want to touch on that? Nope. Um, this is for the library and I've got, there's a few of them. Um, I'll, just, I'll just read them and then uh, you can address uh, the library. What can be done about the, our library being used as an after-school daycare uh, from the Army Trail school students. The atmosphere in the library continues to be problematic with the high volume of junior high students. This can be quite rowdy, what can be done? There have been several negative comments on the Addison E-Group regarding the behavior of some of the middle school kids at the library. Theft is an issue as well as the bad language and overall disrespect to staff and everyone else in the library. Uh, how is the library going to address this? There might be one more in there that might come up later. Uh, 
Okay. This is my opinion. If it is difficult for you to utilize, the, this is not policy, this is opinion. If it's difficult for you to use the library when students who have a right to be there are there, choose another time. However, Mary has probably better information as what we are doing to try to control. Uh, we have social zones in the library. Uh, if you are in the children's department after school, it is a, a vibrant hub of activity. It will not be a traditional library environment that you're used to. Um, but if you make your way to the second floor, as Rob said in his remarks, we do have silent zones where adults or actually patrons of any age can work and study. We have quiet zones where if you're with someone and you want to whisper and, and may need to talk occasionally in hushed tones, uh, you can do that without being frowned at. Um, and so we, we've tried to segment the library to make it a welcoming environment for people no matter what age they are. Um, we do view it as a positive thing that students hang out at the library. And I feel like I say this every year here, if, if you know coyotes and kids at the public library are the biggest problems we have here, uh, the coyotes will go away in a few weeks probably and uh, the kids at the library are, are something we think is um, something we're proud of. We do have structured activities every day after school. Um, we haven't always had that. We used to have activities a couple days a week. We're finding that by offering more structured programming we can engage kids in uh, specific things. Um, not every student who comes to the library is interested in every program that we have. Some of them uh, just want to hang out. Some want to play on the computers. Some are doing their homework and have projects that are due and, and they're working on other things. Um, so we can't say that every kid will be in the meeting room doing whatever the program is that day, but it, it engages many of them. Uh, there are over 100 kids every day after school. And they're kids who are full of life and energy. They've been in school all day and they've been let loose. We don't have the same jurisdiction over students that teachers and schools do. Uh, but in terms of inappropriate language, we have rules that they have to follow. We ask kids to leave if they can't follow those rules. Um, do they remember from one day to the next? Not particularly. Sometimes it's different kids. It, it is challenging for our staff and we have all hands on deck rules every day after school. All of the public service staff are out on the floor monitoring behavior, helping patrons, um, trying to make sure that it's a welcoming place. Uh, but it's a challenge that uh, we're pretty proud of. As Rob mentioned, our teen services coordinator was named librarian of the year by our state association in recognition of what we're doing with the kids after school. Um, so I know it's not perfect. And I know some of you probably didn't like Rob's response, um, but there is some truth to that. I don't do my grocery shopping on Saturday morning because I don't like the crowds at the grocery store at that time of day. So the kids are going to be there after school. And if you can choose to visit the library at a different time during the week, um, if that's not the time that you find the library to be most welcoming to you, then um, if you can adjust your schedule, that might be something you want to consider doing. Having said that, please come see me anytime. If you see something inappropriate and you feel our staff has not responded to it, let me know. If you're not sure where the, the quiet areas are, um, let us know and we'll, we'll show you where those are. Um, it's, it's not a perfect solution and I, I wish I had an easier answer, um, but we welcome the kids. We're glad they're there and uh, I, I want to commend my staff because I do think they're doing the very best they can. I, I can solve it real easy. We'll change the school hours till 5 p.m. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I guess that got voted down. Uh, for the mayor, this is more of a comment than a question. We need more variety of restaurants in Addison. <laughs> well, you know, I, I have the 
advantage of longevity around here. And I, I can remember not all that long ago when there might have been two restaurants in Addison, and if you were going out to dinner, you were going out of Addison. So, uh, you know, it's changed dramatically. Yeah, I, I could see a couple of other restaurants uh, in town. Uh, but I, I think we're doing pretty good right now as far as our mix and the number of restaurants in town and the quality. For the mayor, is Thornton's a break room area for the Addison police? So many people texting and driving, many cops inside the gas station. Did you want me to answer that, Mayor? Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that person's correct. Uh, they do take their break at Thornton. Um, they usually take a couple 15-minute breaks in the evening. Thornton is a 24-hour uh, service station that offers them coffee and things like that. Um, so they do take their breaks there. Um, they'll call out their reports there and things like that. So you're going to see the squads there, absolutely. Now, um, I've had a couple calls where there have been too many squads there at one particular time. Um, I address that every time I get that call. So um, if you see that, let me know. Um, and we will address it, absolutely. For school district four, currently do the schools in the district have lunch balance accounts, meaning any accounts for children that are not able to pay for lunches during the school year? If so, do you accept donations to cover these accounts? Superintendent Langton. Thank you. So the answer to the question is certainly with uh, close to 4,000 students, we do have some students who may have balance for their uh, lunch uh, account. Um, I would ask that whoever had uh, uh, submitted that question that they reach out to my office tomorrow because I would be happy to talk to them if they would like to make a donation. Uh, that most likely will uh, probably best to be go through our uh, school district foundation, uh, which is a CO3, uh, a 40C3 uh, organization. So if they could call my office tomorrow, that'd be great. Uh, for the mayor, why are there so many gyms and taco stands on Lake Street? It's because what they have the tacos. They well, gotta go yeah, work at the gym. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That was my answer, actually. <laughs> uh, again, I, I mean, people have to realize that the property that's developed is privately owned property, and if the zoning allows for a specific type of business, we can't preclude them from developing that business. Apparently, there's several organizations and groups that feel that gyms are an important or a viable uh, business venture. And quite honestly, right now with the economy, big boxes, retail, nobody wants to put them up because they're not successful. Restaurants and health centers and entertainment centers are what is popular, and that's what people are gravitating to as investments. Uh, this is addressed to the library and the park district. Will you commit to soliciting citizens' input before you engage in any future new construction? Um, on the part of the library, that is our plan. Uh, when we constructed our current library, we had focus groups uh, from the community uh, four, uh, four or five of them, I believe. And we received uh, a lot of input. Uh, one of the results of that input was the fact that we have a, a, a cafe area in, an, in this building. Um, so we only have one particular project in mind during the foreseeable future. And it is our plan to, to seek community input. Thank you. Uh, the Edison Park District um, has promoted and continues to promote citizens advisory committees as well as a, um, an out, um, a mailer which will be sent to individuals and citizens throughout the village of Addison. Um, what specifically I'm talking about would be a, a potential aquatic center that we would need to go to referendum for. Before we go to referendum, we would have a community survey and 
Uh, that would be a scientific study, uh, survey. It would not be a shotgun approach to asking the citizens of Addison what they're looking for, um, specifically site locations, and have a citizen advisory committee. And during our opening statement, we did state that those will be extremely heavily weighted. And ultimately, if we go to a referendum, it would be in the hands of the citizens of Addison. No, you're exactly right. If the citizens are going to have to pay for any developments or anything like that, then we need to ask the community what they want and what they're willing to pay for. So before any future developments, we definitely would go to the community for their feedback. This one's from Group 2 for the Northern Illinois uh, students. Um, I'm trying to get to their questions uh, here. They probably want to get to bed, I'm sure. Uh, the question that Group 2 has is for the mayor. In the news recently, there was an article about an officer-related shooting. Our group was wondering, wondering what, if any, steps are being taken to maintain high levels of safety in the community. Uh, well, as I mentioned in my opening statements, uh, our, our PD is considered the premier department in the county. Uh, certainly, Bill, if you want to talk about uh, what we do and how I, we handle uh, High risk situations and thank you, Mayor. Yeah, we are an accredited uh, agency with excellence. Uh, we're probably one to two percent worldwide that is accredited with excellence, which means that there's independent auditors auditors that actually come in and um, and confirm that what we're doing and what our policy usage is and st and what we state um, is consistent. Um, now, having said that. Um, the recent shooting incident was an isolated incident. It was a, a domestic type incident. Um, it wasn't random in any way. Um, all the residents of that building are very safe. Uh, we, uh, we did not even investigate that particular shooting um, on our own. It is now state law that any uh, police department involved shooting is therefore investigated by an outside agency. So it was the DuPage County Major Crimes Task Force that actually came in and investigated uh, that incident. Um, the, um, if, if I might say this, the, the, the person that was shot, she's uh, still in the hospital. Uh, she's still living. Uh, the officers are doing very well. Uh, they receive um, counseling and care afterwards. They're sent to the hospital. Uh, they're immediately checked as well. Um, there's a complete and thorough independent investigation and, um, and then there's, um, there's counseling and, and uh, medical um, issues that are addressed before the officer can return to duty. And all those things are being accomplished with uh, good results right now. And it's all happening because of uh, good training on behalf of uh, department personnel. We train continuously along with the fire department. We do mass in the, in the school districts, mass casualty um, incident training, tabletop training, traffic stop training. Um, we do a lot um, to protect the public, our citizens, our schools, and as a result, the officers have responded extremely well to that. So, um, <clears throat> Here's another one from, it's actually group three at Northern Illinois University, uh, and this is for the mayor. Um, there is a growing concern about the use of ice melting agents. That's like salt and stuff like that. I was misreading that when I first looked at it, ice agents, uh, and their effect on adding chlorides to the waterways. What effect is the city making to reduce their environmental impact on the waterways while still providing safe driving conditions for residents? Well, uh, we pre-treat the streets in advance of any storms that are uh, anticipated. Uh, Jan, if you want to fill in a little bit more, too. Yeah, we're, we're, we're well aware of that issue, Mayor. Public Works has uh, eliminated the use of any pollutant to uh, uh, make the streets safe during snowstorms. Uh, we operate under strict EPA guidelines when it comes to those those operations. So we're not contributing to that. Our, our treatment plants are all meeting EPA standards. We're upgrading those in the next couple of years to, to further meet all EPA regulations. All developments that are uh, 
uh, constructed in Addison uh, have to uh, perform what's called best management practices, which also filters uh, contaminants before they reach the, the stream. Uh, so we're doing everything we can to keep our streams and our, our waterways clean. Uh, and this is the last of the Northern Illinois class things. It's class, uh, group four. Uh, although, and, and this is a, an important question we've gotten a couple times in the past. Although everyone is representing individual taxing bodies that provide specific services, how are you all working together to create a more cohesive Addison community and other similar levels, similar levels of quality service? Well, uh, I'll take that. Uh, we uh, have an intergovernmental uh, group that meets quarterly, and that's the leadership of all the different taxing bodies in the village of Addison to talk about what we've done in the past three months and uh, projects that are going forward. Last year, uh, I convened what we called Addison 2040, which was a meeting and actually a focus uh, group of my counterparts and the chief operating officers, the village manager and his equivalent in each of the other taxing bodies. And uh, the, the exercise really was to vision what we felt Addison would look like or should look like in the year 2040. And then to start mapping out how we together can work in our individual areas to achieve that goal. Uh, looking at five year, 10 year, 15 year plans to achieve that. Uh, we had two of those meetings. We will be doing subsequent meetings this year to follow up on that, but uh, we intend to have action plans in place so each taxing agency has a roadmap that they can follow to achieve their needs as independent, but also the total needs of our community as we go forward. Anybody else want to jump in on that? Uh, I, I, you know, as a having done many, many towns of these town meetings, uh, I think Addison probably works the best all the taxing bodies that I see uh, from these town meetings of any of the towns. Uh, and through the years, we've gotten many examples of the park district and the school districts and the uh, libraries and all, everybody working together. So Addison really does a great job of good teamwork. Yeah, uh, just a little bit more on that. Uh, I'm a member of the DuPage Mayors and Managers, and it's 33 municipalities in DuPage County. And my fellow mayors just marvel when they hear the things that go on in Addison and that interdepartmental and intergovernmental cooperation. They don't see that in other communities. So we really are unique, as I alluded to in my opening statements. So, Don, your kids get an A. Uh, class dismissed. Um, for the mayor, I live on Myrich. People are speeding and going through stop, the stop sign. Who or what do I need to do to lower the speed limit? Uh, if you would call the director tomorrow and let us know your address, we will put up. Uh, during the winter, it's hard to get the uh, the sign up there and the uh, the monitor, but certainly we could increase patrols and. Uh, we sure can. During the winter, the speed trailers are stored in the garage. Um, if you can imagine, road conditions sometimes causes accidents with those things. So we've learned to put them away for the winter, but we do initiate special watches and things like that that we can. Uh, that we can go after, so please call me. This one's addressed to the mayor, but I believe it should go to School District 4. But uh, Sounds if, good if, to me. If not, uh, uh, you're doing a great job. Oh, you oh on second thought, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lady by Lincoln School that crosses students and families without a crosswalk. She only uses cones. Why? My kids don't feel safe this way. Every other place has crosswalks. I assume that's the district provides that. Uh, yeah, we have a we have an outside service that uh, has crossing guards. Superintendent Langton, did you want to address that specific area? So that um, is true, Mr. Williams' uh, reference that we do uh, contract our crossing guard services out. Um, that is our responsibility to make sure that our, our students have safe passage around our schools. So I believe that the example that was referenced by the person who submitted the question is in front of Lincoln School where we have two-way traffic, we have um, uh, parkways with grass, and there's also driveways, of course, because of all of the residents there. So after school hours and before school hours, we do have a crossing guard. We pay a crossing guard to be out there to assist with um, 
students moving safely across the street. Um, the question I believe asked why there is not a designated crosswalk there. Yes. And the reason is, is because of the offset of where the driveways are. There are not um, sidewalks currently that would make that crosswalk easily to have in place. Um, I can tell you, and Chief Hayden might be able to reinforce this, um, that we have not had any incidents where children have been struck or uh, pedestrians have been struck, um, and not that we're waiting for that, certainly, but um, that has not risen to that level. It's a very congested area before and after school because parents dropping kids off. So we always encourage people to have their children walk to school because that Lincoln School attendance area is um, it's, it's more densely populated because of some of the multi-residential uh, buildings in that area. So we encourage families to have their kids walk to school and not um, feel the need to have to drive them and drop them off because that adds to the congestion. I would concur with that. District 4 and their contractor does a very, very good job. And I cannot recall um, a vehicle student uh, accident at all. Um, and we're coming up to 9 o'clock, which is a hard deadline to have to uh, stop. So we're not going to get through all the questions. I do give all the questions to all the participants or the ones directed to each participant, so they will get the actual cards uh, on all, all of that. So they will get to see them, and uh, uh, please follow up. If we don't get to your question, you can follow up with them. Um, for the Park District, what incentives is the Park District offering with the competition from the new export? Oh, uh, thank you. The uh, Addison, uh, our specifically club fitness, I, I think that that's what the uh, caller is uh, requesting. Club fitness co is constantly evolving, giving um, Addison residents special rates, incentives to come into club fitness, um, increasing the type of services which are available, uh, such as an a la carte menu um, or freestyle. Um, John, do you have uh, an, any specifics? I know we have several uh, programs coming up uh, for, uh, for enrollment drives. Yes, and we just um, finished. We had a customer appreciation week where if you signed up, you got X amount of months for free. I know that we're going to have some more promotions in February, and um, one of the things that we're going to do is have little celebrations and different um, promotions throughout the whole year. So uh, just especially because it's our 50th and not necessarily because of the competition, um, because we have strong services and certified trainers, and we have a step up above from a lot of the competition with our requirements for certifications. So um, February, I think it's 13th, or um, we have For the Love of Fitness, so look out for that, um, that whole week for the promotions and throughout the year, and we will uh, market those so that you guys can take advantage of those. This one I'm going to have to ad lib a little bit. It's it's hard for me to read it. Uh, for the mayor, trees are an important part of the of the neighborhood. Uh, they've got one tree that's uh, growing very badly and probably is going to be dying. Uh, I think is what they're saying, and they're uh, uh, they just feel that it's important. And there are some areas where the mulch is loaded up so high at the base of the trees. They're concerned about the trees. It's asking, what does the community arborist do? Uh, well, he's very, very uh, aware of the conditions uh, in our, our community. Uh, obviously, uh, when we had the ash borer issue and all that, uh, very involved. Um, our policy is that if a tree that is in the parkway, which belongs to Addison, uh, if the tree is unhealthy, we will take it down and provide a replacement if the resident wants a replacement. Uh, but if the tree is healthy, then there's an issue. And what we find quite often is there'll be a resident that says, I really don't want that tree in front of my, they don't have a good reason except they don't want it there. Uh, that becomes problematic because it's a healthy tree and there's no reason to cut it down. We will look at uh, safety issues in terms of 
if it's obstructing a view of a driveway coming out or whatever, then we'll make some considerations. But uh, our arborist is very aggressive in looking and uh, maintaining the trees that we have in town. Uh, we spend a lot of money replacing the ones that we had to take down. And uh, if there is a unique need, please uh, give uh, community service a, a, a call and they will address it. So. Okay, our, our final two questions, I got the word two to go. Uh, uh, for the mayor, is there any plans to bring a major in major retailers like Mariano's, Target, Kohl's to Addison? Again, it is really at the discretion of the businesses to come in. We can try to uh, encourage them, but the box stores, the Kohl's, uh, are really not looking at expanding at this point because they're having problems. Uh, Mariano's, uh, we've got the Caputo's now, so Mariano's wouldn't consider coming in. Uh, we do uh, work aggressively. We actually have just recently hired uh, a community, uh, an econ ec can't even speak anymore, economic development uh, coordinator that'll be working with us to uh, really go out and recruit and, and try to encourage more development. But you know, one of the things that we've, we've worked very hard on is promoting Addison, uh, whether it's the Thursday night events, uh, selling Addison and having Addison be recognized as a place to go for either entertainment or dining or whatever else helps us to draw other businesses into town. So we've been focusing a lot in the last couple of years in developing that image and persona. So uh, more will come on that uh, this coming year. Okay, now I've got the word we really got to end. Um, this is just a comment. I think it's a good one to end on. Uh, thank, thanks to all for protecting citizens, saving lives, clearing streets, teaching kids, providing books, activities, and much more. Proud to live in Addison. So, good way to end. We'd like to thank all, all of you. Uh, we'd like to thank all our speakers and you, the audience, for your participation in the 12th Annual Shape of Addison Town Meeting. It's not easy being up here answering the questions. We look forward to next year's program. Thank you and good night. Thank you.